men who go to sea must know well the ways of ships, the ways of modern ships, new in design, new in speed and performance and safety, for good ships need good men. So since 1938, we have been training the best men we can find, training them in a truly national program unique in our long maritime history to take their places on American ships. First, we are training cadets to become officers of our merchant fleet. On deck, in the engine room, 400 young men chosen by competition from every state are spending three years on board a working ship and one ashore to learn their jobs. And 200 cadet officers, graduates of state nautical schools and of the cadet training system, are sailing every trade route open to our enterprise, working, watching, studying, learning the intricate mechanics of a modern ship. For these are powerful ships America has never had before. And these are men worth training, the officers of the future. And so the United States Maritime Commission, working with ship operators, is bringing new blood, more good blood and good heads into the American merchant service. Developing men who can sail our ships, men who can face the hardships of the sea, men who serve in times of national emergency, 100 of them already chosen by the Navy for active service helping to hold secure the things we want to keep secure. As young men take to the sea to build the offices of tomorrow, so must the older men, older in years and experience, licensed to sail our ships today, improve their knowledge. At historic Fort Trumbull in New London, Connecticut, and at Government Island in San Francisco Bay, training stations have been established for the mature men, seasoned officers of the Merchant Marine, who are the backbone of our officer personnel. Here, masters and mates, chiefs and assistant engineers, leaving their ships, have come to get the why and the wherefore, the book and blackboard training, the theory, that lies behind the practice. 600 officers a year come back to learn, for three months each, the changing ways of ships and shipping. What training can do for the officers, training can do for the men, for the unlicensed seamen who do the ship's work. At Hoffman Island in Lower New York Bay, principal Atlantic Coast Station for men with sea experience, and again on Government Island on the West Coast, instruction and drill, quarters, uniforms and wages are provided in a three months course for American seamen who want to move ahead. Enrolled in the United States Maritime Service, an agency created by the Maritime Commission and administered for it by the United States Coast Guard, with Coast Guard and merchant officers in charge, 5,000 experienced seamen voluntarily come off their ships each year to take this special training ashore. Training to make them better seamen, responsible for knowing all their duties in all parts of a ship. Fundamentally important is proper handling of a boat. When tragedy strikes at sea, the only source of self-preservation is the lifeboat. So one hour a day, every day and every week for three months, the order is boat drill. Every man in training gets his time in boat drill. One hour a day in fair weather or foul, bosun, chips, able seaman, oiler, fireman and wiper, steward, cook and mess boy into the lifeboats. For American ships, already the safest in the world, must be kept safe. Safe for passengers and crew, safe for ship and cargo.
the boats alone are not enough. The seaman has to know in every way how to act and what to do when danger breaks. The Lyle gun and breeches buoy, one of many rescue methods, one of many kinds of training for better seamanship. More than 2,000 seamen already have been taught to speak with waving flags and blinking lights. Purely voluntary on the part of selected men is this newest development in training, instruction in the basic principles and handling of pistols, rifles and machine guns, broadside and anti-aircraft guns for protection of the merchant service in time of emergency. The merchant marine must play a vital part in the national program of preparedness and no factor in national security can be neglected. Gas rescue work, fires at sea or volatile cargoes are dangers which need the protection of training and skill. In the engine room and the machine shop, Practical training and repairs is part of the daily routine. A ship is a ship only when she's at sea. Laid up at dock, a ship's no good. When breakdowns at sea are repaired at sea, money is saved and cargoes moved and travelers keep their schedule. A ship can get a good name or a bad one for food and service. She's a good feeder, they say. So cooks, butchers, bakers, deck, bedroom, bar and dining stewards are taught to know and heed the strict requirements of American travelers. Over many years, the records show, the average service of the American seaman is 10 years or less. As a result, between five and 10,000 merchant sailors are needed annually as replacements. One-fifth of these will be new seamen trained in the maritime service. 1,500 new officers are needed too, and 10% will come from the cadet training system. 25% will graduate from four state school ships, and 65% will come up from the ranks. The major problem of our merchant marine is how to train the unskilled youth, the young man who seeks a career at sea. He must learn a democratic discipline if he would be an efficient member of the crew, not yield his pride and self-respect, but learn to work with all in such a way to make the small world of a ship healthy and happy and orderly. Gallops Island in Boston Harbor, a complete radio training school has been set up with fine equipment identical with shipboard installations. 300 young men who will soon be known as Sparks. Learning his bits and da's, his code and typing together, the student makes ready for a profession. Learning, too, the general rules of seamanship and conduct to fit him for a job at sea. ago, American genius designed and built the glorious clipper, black-hulled beauties with towering masts and widespread spars that sailed like living things. The 
sea witch and the flying cloud, the stag hound and the sovereign of the sea, the red jacket, the rainbow, the nightingale, and lightning. Lyric names that call up memories of years when wooden ships and iron men firmly held America supreme at sea. Today, the Joseph Conrad, bearer of an honored name, carries new seamen of the Merchant Marine on Tampa Bay and the Gulf of Mexico, giving them the feel of a wooden deck, the feel of a square-rigged ship under their feet and in their blood. The Conrad, tiny beside our modern hulls, can take small classes for voyages of instruction in customs and tradition, in basic seamanship that never changes, in rules of wind and tide, elements that guide a ship as much today as ever. Joseph Conrad, a training ship in the maritime service, a symbol of maritime leadership in the past and for the future. Distinctive in the Maritime Training Service is the station at St. Petersburg, Florida, home port of the Conrad, the American Seaman, and the Tusatala, shore station for classes, drills, recreation, barracks, mess, and training school. The American Seaman, largest and finest training vessel maintained by any government in the world, converted from a freighter in the old laid-up fleet into a modern maritime school ship, carrying 250 apprentice seamen and a crew of 55. Cruising at sea more than half the time to provide instruction in ships work under actual conditions afloat, the American seaman is training boys and young men from all the 48 states. Boys from the waterfront city, the small towns and the farms, selected from the best the civilian conservation camps can offer. Physically hard and mentally quick, they are getting a chance to find a place to make a living and to do something. Hard work and hard study demand good food and plenty of it. Good food for officers and men alike, prepared entirely by apprentice boys with competent instruction. Now, a seaman has to know a lot of things and starts to learn with simple chores. To box a compass in the class on deck, to handle lines and splice a hawser, to read and send in signal code with flags. A few of many things he learned in crowded shipboard hours, all in a day's work.
day's work starts with washing down. Both ships and men eat better if they're clean. Then down to work in classes, learning to light off a new burner beneath a boiler by watching and by doing. Men work better when they know the how and the why. Classes in theory, back to school again. Lectures, notebooks, diagrams, and blackboards. Boat drill, abandoned ship. Red sound at sea. But here, a drill is precaution against disaster to make for safety if the time should come. Based in the Gulf, sailing in the Caribbean Sea among West Indian islands, the American seaman plays marine good neighbor to make a diplomatic phrase a living deed. Now Cuba, Pearl of the Antilles, familiar Moro Castle, Havana, Let go the anchor. Days of work at sea, liberty is good. Liberty to spend a day ashore, to look about and say hello and play. Adios, hasta mañana. Up anchor and out to sea again, as all America is turning to the sea again. Building ships, 500 new ships, 4 million tons to cost a billion and a quarter dollars. Valuable machinery of commerce, valuable weapons for defense, ships need able, skilled men to sail them. America is building ships, training the men who go to sea, cadets and officers, seamen and apprentices, for a merchant marine to make America proud. <laughs> <laughs>